Welcome to Module 3, Lesson 8. Let's get started. Today we will be learning how to understand the function of parentheses. We are learning this so that we can multiply and divide fluently when we use math in real life situations. We'll know that we're successful today when we can use parentheses as tools for grouping. So do you know what parentheses are? These symbols are parentheses. We use these symbols in an equation to show us what to do first. Let's look at this array. Write a multiplication expression to match the array. The expression would be 2 times 6 because there are two rows with 6 in each row. Now subtract 2 from the expression. Two times six minus two. What should we do first? We can use parentheses to solve two times six minus two. So first, we had two rows of six. So we would write the parentheses around two rows of six. We know that 2 times 6 equals 12. So we've completed the first step. The first step is always what's in parentheses. The parentheses say that we should multiply 2 times 6 and the product would be 12. How many did we take away? We took away 2. So to find the answer, we would have to subtract 2 from 12. 12 minus 2. How many are left? Answer, there are 10 left because 12 minus 2 equals 10. It matters where the parentheses are in an equation. This equation says 25 minus 10 in parentheses divided by 5 equals 3. So let's look at the array. How many are in each row? There are 5 in each row. How many rows in all? There are 5 rows in all. 5 times 5 is 25. Notice that two rows of five are crossed out. Two rows of five, or two times five, is ten. So take away ten. What about the circles, the red circles surrounding the first rows? It's separating them into groups, right? How many groups are there? There are three groups. So, does the equation match the picture? It does, yes, because we start with 25 and subtract 10. Then the 15 left over are divided into groups of 5. So we can say that 15 divided by 5 equals 3. Let's see another example. Now does the equation match the picture? Notice that the parentheses have changed position. Now it's 25 minus, in parentheses, 10 divided by 5 equals 3. Is that true? No. 
No, it is not, because we subtract 10, not 2. So looking at this equation, we would first divide 10 divided by 2. We know that 5 goes into 10 two times. So we would do that first. Then we would take 25 minus 2 equals 23. And that does not match the picture. Look at these two equations. Notice that the numbers are the same, but the parentheses are different. Does the answer change when the parentheses are moved in the equation? Answer. Yes, the answer changes when the parentheses are moved in this equation. Looking at the left-hand side, Notice that first we would add 2 plus 3 equals 5, because it's in the parentheses, right? 2 plus 3 equals 5. And then we would take the 5 and multiply by 7 to get 35. On the right-hand side, the parentheses are surrounding the 3 times 7. So the first thing we would do is multiply 3 times 7, and 3 times 7 equals 21. Then we would add the 2 plus 21 equals 23. Does the answer change when the parentheses are moved in this equation? On the left side, we would first multiply 3 times 4, because it's in the parentheses, and 3 times 4 equals 12, and then we would divide 12 divided by 2. Let's see how many times 2 goes into 12. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. 2 goes into 12 six times. So 12 divided by 2 equals 6. Our answer on the left-hand side is 6. On the right-hand side, we would start by dividing 4 divided by 2. How many times does 2 go into 4? 2, 4. 2 goes into 4 two times. So 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 3 times 2 equals 6. So in this example, does the answer change when the parentheses are moved in the equation? No, the answer does not change when the parentheses are moved in this equation. So is it a rule that the answer always changes? No, it is not. It's not a rule. You have to go through the entire process to find out for sure whether it changes the answer. Let's use the strategy to solve the read, draw, write question below. We're going to read the question and pick out the most important information. We'll draw a picture to help solve the problem. This could be an array, a bar or tape diagram, or any other math model. You want to use the math model that is suggested in the question if there is a suggestion. Otherwise, you do what you feel is best. Finally, we'll write the answer as a complete sentence and we'll explain how we reached our answer to give a little more definition to our answer to the question. Okay, let's read the question. Nick sold seven shirts. For eight dollars each. Then he bought one new shirt for twenty-two dollars. How much money does he have left? Okay, we've read the question. Now it's time to draw a math model. I'm going to draw an equation or write an equation on my Google Jamboard. If you have access, you could go to jamboard.google.com and open a Jamboard to do the, do the work alongside me, 
or you could use a pencil and paper, or if you have one, you could use a dry erase board with a dry erase marker. Okay, so the question is, Nick sold seven shirts for $8, then he bought one new shirt for $22. He sold seven shirts for eight dollars each so that would be seven shirts times eight or seven times eight that's what he did first so I'm going to put parentheses around seven times eight then he bought one new shirt for twenty two dollars so if he sold shirts for eight dollars seven shirts for eight dollars each that's how much he brought in if he bought a new shirt he paid out twenty two dollars so that means I'm going to subtract twenty two dollars how much money does he have left that's our answer that's what we're trying to find out so the first thing I'm going to do is multiply seven times Eight. If you don't know the answer to 7 times 8, you can use one of your strategies. You could use a fifths fact to find the answer. Or if you know the answer, you might know already that 7 times 8 equals 56. So I would first find the product of 7 times 8 using whatever strategy you need to use. The answer is 56, and then we would subtract 22 to get our answer. What is the difference between 56 and 22? The answer is $34. Okay, finally, I need to write out complete sentences to answer the question, how much money does he have left? Nick has $34 left. He earned $56 by selling seven shirts. Then he paid $22 for a new shirt. I subtracted 22 from 56 to find my answer. Okay, let's check our answer. Answer, Nick has $34 left. He earned $56 because seven times eight equals 56. I subtracted the $22 that he spent and 56 minus 22 equals 34. Notice that the wording was not exactly the same between what I wrote on my Jamboard and what the real answer was, and that's okay. The wording can be different as long as the information is the same and the answer is the same. Now it's your turn to complete a redraw-write question on your own. We're going to read the question together, then you will find the most important information, you'll draw a math model, and then you'll write sentences to answer the question. When you're finished, you can go to the description box below and check your answer against the correct answer. So let's read the question first. There are nine rows of skateboards with four skateboards in each row. Twelve of the skateboards are yellow and the rest are blue. How many of the skateboards are blue? Okay, pause the video right here. Find your answer. Write your answer in complete sentences and then check it in the description box below. Do your very best work and I'll see you in the next lesson.